Hello everyone and welcome back guys to something a little bit different where today we're having a look through the all new U's coming for F1 2019. I'm trying to change up the style I do these videos a little bit at the moment so let me know what you guys think about this style where today we'll just be you know scrolling through on the Cody's blog you know for the update that's you know the updated news I probably should say for F1 2019. I'm really really starting to get excited for this game I can't believe now it's what less than two weeks away until F1 2019 drops. Let me know down in the comments which version of the game you will be picking up and you know sort of whether you like this style of videos a little bit more as well. But yeah, the three R's of F1 2019, respect, reputation and a rivalry. It's time to talk about the three R's of F1 2019 by delving into career mode and the F2 feeder series. I am really, really excited to be getting into those Formula 2 cars. Career mode, let's start off then with F1 2019 career mode, shall we? 2019's career mode has a number of changes, not least of which is the all new F2 feeder series. Now, for this one, you know, I think it's basically already been confirmed. I'm sure a lot of you guys are well aware, like I am, that obviously the F2 feeder series, basically what you do is, I think, three missions, of, you know, before you jump into F1, you can sort of skip it as well. But yeah, three missions before you get into F1, and that can sort of help, you know, you can pick a young driver program, everything like that, which, you know, massively will swing the teams, you know, the offers that you get for you. Obviously, for example, if you're part of the Red Bull Driver Academy, you're probably going to get an offer from Red Bull or Toro Rosso if you're part of the Mercedes Driver Academy, most likely Force India or possibly Williams as well. God help you. Uh, but yeah, obviously, so that sort of thing just means, you know, although on F120, what was it, 2016 onwards, it's always felt a bit weird that, you know, you could just jump straight into the Mercedes and, you know, potentially if you do really, really well in the F2 feeder series, you might be able to do that as well. And I'm sure there's another option around it just for people that want to jump into Mercedes or something like that to get in and be winning races straight off the bat. But, you know, me personally, for those of you guys that have been around the channel for a little while, obviously the F1 2018 career mode I did with Williams, that was a grind and a half. I'll be honest, it took a season before we were absolutely anywhere. But, yeah, I personally sort of prefer that sort of thing, you know, build a team back up, especially a team like Williams as well. But, yeah, obviously, so this means that now you get a bit of a chance to pick, you know, a team that you, you know, you'd aspire to join. You know, a lot of people will probably go with the Ferrari Driver Academy, so you'll get a job offer at Sauber or Haas, maybe, and everything like that. And it means down the line, sort of, I'd imagine, obviously, if you do, like, a really good season, almost like, you know, Charlotte Leur did in F1 2018 with Sauber, you might get a job offer from Ferrari for F1 2019, and that is a really, really exciting prospect, in my opinion. Each scenario has a different effect, which follows later. Your overall performance will earn you respect, and will have an impact on the contracts to you offered by F1 teams at the start of the following season. It's not just respect, though. Your contract offers will be influenced by reputation and by picking a driver academy at the start of the game. You can choose which teams you want to earn reputation with over the course of the feeder series. Now, I don't think, obviously, by that it means that, say, you pick the Mercedes driver academy. I don't think you're only locked into, you know, it's like Williams, Force India and Mercedes. You know, you could still get an offer elsewhere. But it'll most likely be a bit of a worse contract, unfortunately. But obviously that is just part of picking wisely before you get into the game. The scenarios have more than one outcome. For example, did you choose to let your faster teammate pass or not? Your choices are key here. That's not all. The feeder series also gives you a number of cutscenes that allow these choices to play out via your interactions with the game's new characters. Lucas Webber, your teammate and Devon Butler, your closest rivals. Yeah, that one is quite interesting as well. I think there's sort of a bit more talk about this further on in the article. But yeah, you've got two sort of rivals as such then. Obviously your teammate is always your closest rival. Yeah, ultimately this Devon Butler guy is, you know, just someone outside of the team as well. Here's the thing, the choices you make are remembered by the game. You can continue to inform these kind of questions asked by the press, not just during the feeder series, but throughout your career in F1. A range of questions the press can ask has also been expanded beyond these in F1 2019. And it's not just the reporters, the commentators will also remember the events of the feeder series and refer to them when discussing you and your F2 rivals. So I think this is just sort of making the game a bit more immersive. You know, we've always sort of had this on F1 2018, for example, you know, they in this sort of the build up to the race, they talk about what happened last time and things like that. Every so often, you know, you'd sometimes get a bit of a reference and things like that. And don't get me wrong, it was a very, very good stepping stone. But, you know, this really sort of ups the ante. You know, they can talk about stuff that happened last season. They can talk about how well you're doing relative to Lucas or Devon and everything like that. And, you know, perhaps maybe down the line, you know, F1 2021, for example, you might be fighting them 
for the Drivers' World Championship, you know, Mercedes versus Ferrari style or something like that. And I'm sure that would be very, very cool as uh, well. Of course, these relationships aren't just one way either. Lucas and Devon also answer questions from the press and you'll regularly receive transcripts of their interviews so you can see what they're saying about you. So, you know, potentially, potentially you, you could you could get a bit of beef with them, uh, stuff like that, you know calling each other terrible and things like that and you maybe maybe just maybe you might make yourself a few enemies in f1 2019 as well this brings us onto the rivalry system to start selecting devin and lucas as a rival will award you with bonus respect making them an often attractive but never mandatory option when choosing with who uh whom to pursue a bitter grudge or a sporting rivalry not only that whoever you have as rivals whether devin lucas or any of the official drivers those characters will now feature at an invitational event between race weekends where they represent bonus objectives and an opportunity to score some extra respect. And I think that's really, really cool as well. Sadly, F1 2018, I think I did one of the, uh, you know, sort of off weekend events and just never really sort of did them again because they just carried absolutely no weight. It was basically just sort of 10 minutes extra on the side that I'm sure a lot of people really didn't jump into. So, you know, offering that bit of a bonus really will make especially for people like me you know for example if i go to williams again i'll need every single extra resource points i can possibly get as well and perhaps most importantly though and this is the bit i'm really really excited about lucas and devon aren't locked to a specific team they're starting teams similar to you or to your own in terms of performance i don't know who they're going to be with then if you pick williams because well they're going to be op and they'll be able to pursue contracts with any team on the grid just as you can. So potentially down the line, say, for example, you two are having a really close rivalry. Say, for example, you and Devon are both in Toro Rosso. What stops, you know, you two having to fight for the second Red Bull seat when Gasly obviously gets booted out as well? So that's really, really cool and exciting as well. Uh, in this way, you they represent a new challenge. Drivers that can move through the teams and challenge you in a race to the top to the ultimate accolade at Drivers Champion. And all of this, of course, takes place against the backdrop of the F1 2019 Championship. All the drivers, all the cars, all the teams, all the tracks, everything like that. New handling, new tyre classifications, new rules governing the point for the fastest lap. The best looking graphics ever in a Formula 1 game. I think we've all seen some footage from that. It is absolutely incredible as well and if you want to experience all, of, experience all of this without the dramatic elements it is possible to skip the feeder series entirely jumping straight into f1 without the new characters and their associated gameplay systems so that sort of gives you the bit of an option as well you know if you don't want all this sort of thing you can just do it as normal formula 2 then which leads us quite neatly into f2 itself while f2 serves as a feeder series introduction to formula 1 2019 career mode there's much more to it than that not only will he be ex able to experience the F uh, the feeder series in F1 2019's career mode. You'll also be able to dive into an F uh, a F2 championship, which I think is something that I really want to try and do down the line as well. So, you know, if that's something you guys want to see, do get yourself subscribed. I'd love to run that sort of alongside F1 2019. Perhaps once I've done sort of the first season of career mode, we might jump into a Formula 2 career mode as well. See, so, yeah, obviously, if you guys want to see that, let me know down in the comments below as well. Uh, here you'll be able to pick, you know, it basically just says, you know, you can do everything from the Formula 2 season. You'll be able to pick an official F2 driver and make your way through every event in the F2 calendar, aiming to become the F2 driver's champion. Beyond that, championships mode will also include a number of other F2-themed championships for you to tackle. And that's another thing I really sort of want to jump into some of these championship modes as well. You know, it's a bit side series on the channel as well. So, yeah, hopefully I feel like they're just a very underrated feature at the moment that I do want to jump into when F1 2019 drops. Similar, F2 will also be available in Grand Prix mode. That's pretty much expected. And everything like that, and obviously just towards the bottom here, it says uh, that obviously it follows the F2 structure like you'd expect, as well as obviously we've got Alex Jacques and Davide Valsecchi as well for that. And then obviously just towards the bottom, we've got the F1 2019 pre-order and everything like that. So that was a bit of a roundup then of what to expect from F1 at 2019 in terms of career mode. I know a lot of people have been waiting for news from career mode in recent weeks. So hopefully this has helped you out a bit as well. Make sure you do get yourself subscribed for more F1 2019 news on the channel. Like I said at the start, let me know sort of your thoughts and feelings about this style of video. You know, something a little bit different. And obviously I'll make sure I link the Cody's vlog, uh, blog even, sorry, I should say, in the description as well. So obviously you can just read through it again if there's anything you have missed. But yeah, thank you all so much for watching this video. Get yourself subscribed if you're new around here as well. And hopefully I will see you guys next time for another video.